Alright, so we just talked about the automaticity cells, so the sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node, the AV node. Next, let's look at the rest of the heart. So besides these two locations, those two small nodes, made up of a few cells, now we're going to look at the rest of the muscle tissue of the heart. So as explained, the automaticity cells had phase 0, 3, and 4. Phase 0 is going to be depolarization, phase 3 is going to be the repolarization, and phase 4 is going to be a resting uh, potential. So the rest of your heart, so the myocardium, is going to behave a different way. Your myocardium is going to have four phases, so 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 4. So I guess that's 5. Uh, did not go into math for a reason, but so let's take a look at those five phases. First, just like we did, we're going to start off by the cell. So the cell is going to have potassium inside, sodium outside. What's going to happen? Well, eventually, your SA node had those funny channels. It's going to create an action potential, and it's going to depolarize. When it depolarizes, it creates that action potential. It's going to propagate. That action potential moves down through the AV node, through the bundle of His, through the bundle branches, through the Purkinje fibers, and eventually we reach our destination, the myocardium. <coughs> the myocardium, so if this is a myocardial muscle cell, it's going to have this ion gradient. What's going to happen is once that depolarization occurs, so once that action potential reaches it, it's going to depolarize, so sodium is going to come in, potassium is going to come out, and what we're going to look at is also we're going to have a little calcium just like before come in, and pretty much the same thing, except the only difference is this kind of a cell cannot, I repeat, cannot come up with its own action potential in most situations. So, like I did, we're going to look at this graphically. Okay, so let's take a look. At this point, this is going to be called phase four. Phase four is going to be our resting, so I'm actually going to label this because this might help. Phase four is going to be resting. So the cell does not depolarize, it hasn't seen an action potential. Action potential comes down, sees the myocardium. What we're going to have is we're going to have phase zero, depolarization. So, depolarization in the automaticity cell had calcium going in. In this situation, we're going to be having sodium. So it's a little different. So we're going to have the cell, potassium, sodium. Sodium is going to go into the cell, rush in. The inside of the cell is going to be more positive, so it's going to go upwards. Eventually, your body realizes that you have a positive inside of that cell. So what will happen is you're going to be having potassium leave just like before, potassium leaves. That creates it so it's not as positive inside that cell. Next what you're going to do is you're going to have calcium slowly come into the cell. Your body's going to realize that your potassium is leaving, calcium will slowly go into the cell when a positive charge is going in and a positive charge is going out. The charges stay approximately the same. That's where you get this little plateau. It should just kind of be a straight line plateau. So calcium is coming in. You've got your potassium leaving. Charges stay about the same inside that cell. Then your calcium channel is going to close. So calcium is not coming in anymore. You're going to have your potassium still coming out. What that's going to do is it's going to bring the inside of that cell more negative, and when it becomes more negative, you're going to uh, come back down to resting membrane potential. So phase four again. I forgot to label in. So what we're going to do is we're going to call phase four resting, phase zero depolarization. Phase one is going to be the potassium starting to leave the cell. So you got sodium coming in, potassium is going to start to leave. Phase two is going to be when calcium decides to enter the picture. When calcium decides to equal out the potassium leaving, charges stay about the same as that little plateau, phase two. Phase three from before, like I said, phase three is going to be repolarization. 
repolarization in this case is again potassium leaving the cell and then eventually you'll reach uh, your phase four which is the resting membrane potential. So um, what I would like to point out is why do we have this, uh, this calcium kind of acting differently? <coughs> well, let's take a look. You've got depolarization and you've got phase one where your potassium's leaving then you've got this phase two. Well what that does, it allows your heart, so you've got your pacemaker up here setting your pace, it allows your muscle, it can't contract as fast as the SA node might want it to. So by adding this phase in, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be adding a refractory period where it gives your muscles kind of a chance where no matter how much of a stimulus you throw at it, it's not going to uh, beat, it's not going to contract until it's ready. So this is going to be a refractory period time. So until you kind of reach out here, you're not going to be able to beat again because your cell is still going to be positive on the inside. If it's positive on the inside, positive up here, if it's positive and you throw another action potential at it and you have more sodium come in, I mean it's, it's not going to do anything. It's, not, it's already depolarized. It needs to repolarize first. So once you've started to repolarize with all the potassium coming out, then it's going to allow your heart to start beating again. You've got two different refractory periods. You've got your absolute and your relative refractory period. Your absolute refractory period is going to be out here where anything before that absolute refractory period you will not be able to beat. So even if it receives a million stimuluses, action potentials coming through that SA node, it will not depolarize. Then you've got another potential once you reach, which is going to be a relative refractory period where it will beat, but it won't like it as much. And then finally, once you reach your resting membrane potential, then um, any stimulus that comes will trigger a full contraction. So the absolute, anything before that, so if a stimulus, your stimulus comes, sets it off, if another stimulus comes when the muscles or when the cells are in this phase, nothing will happen, nothing will happen, nothing will happen, nothing will happen. It's that absolute refractory period that is the main determinant. Then you've got your relative one, so um, maybe every third, maybe every half, maybe, uh, maybe every fifth action potential that comes through will set it off. Um, it will depolarize the cell, but not every action potential that comes through if it's within this time. And then once you reach your resting membrane potential again, then you'll be able to uh, set off any contraction with an action potential. And this is just for your myocardial cells. So looking back, you've got your myocardial cells with phase zero, which is depolarization, phase one, which is the potassium coming out, phase two, calcium, three, repolarization, and four, which is going to be resting your automaticity cells, which is your SA node and your AV node. You're going to have phase zero, which is going to be your depolarization, phase three, repolarization, and phase four, resting.